The Tuatha de Dan An, or the people of the goddess Danu, are a legendary race of supernatural beings who ruled Ireland before the arrival of the Celts. They are often depicted as gods and goddesses, with extraordinary powers and skills in magic, art, and warfare. Some of the most famous members of the Tuatha de Dan An are Dagda, the father of the gods, Nuada, the king of the silver arm, Luff, the master of all crafts, and Morrigan, the goddess of war and fate. But where did these amazing beings come from? How did they arrive in Ireland? And what happened to them after they were defeated by the Milesians, the ancestors of the Irish people? These are the questions that we will explore in this video, using the ancient Irish manuscripts, the modern scholarly research, and some of the alternative theories that have been proposed over the years. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the journey into the origins of the Tuatha de Dan An. The main source of information about the Tuatha de Dan An comes from the Leber Gabala Iren, or the Book of Invasions, a medieval collection of stories that narrates the history of Ireland from the creation of the world to the arrival of Christianity. According to Leber Gabala Iren, the Tuatha de Dan An were the fifth group of invaders who came to Ireland, after the Partholonians, the Nemedians, the Furball, and the Fomorians. The Leber Gabala Iren tells us that the Tuatha de Dan An were originally from four northern islands, where they learned magic and druidry from four masters, Morphiza, Esras, Uishas, and Semias. Then they traveled to the north of Europe, where they encountered a people called the Nemedians, who were their distant relatives. The Nemedians had been driven out of Ireland by the Fomorians, a race of monstrous giants who oppressed and enslaved them. The Tuatha de Danann decided to help the Nemedians in their fight against the Fomorians, but they were unsuccessful and had to flee to the west. The Tuatha de Danann then arrived in a land called Lachlan, which some scholars identify with Scandinavia, and others with a mythical island in the Atlantic Ocean. There they acquired four magical treasures, the Stone of Fowl, which would cry out when the rightful king of Ireland stood on it, the Spear of Luff, which never missed its target, the Sword of Nuada, which could cut through any armor, and the Cauldron of Dagda, which could provide food and drink for any number of people. They also gained a fifth treasure, the Lia Fael, or the Stone of Destiny, which they took from the Fomorians. The Tuatha de Dan and then set sail for Ireland, but they did not want to be seen by the Fir Balg, who were ruling the island at the time. So they used their magic to create a thick mist that covered the land and the sea. They landed at the mountain of Sly of an Iorain, or the Iron Mountain, in the west of Ireland, and burned their ships to show that they had no intention of leaving. They then divided into three groups, led by their three kings, Nuada, Bress, and Eriu. They marched across the country, and met the Fir Balg at the plain of Mag Twyard, or the Plain of Towers, in the north of Ireland. The Tuatha de Dan An and the Fir Balg fought a fierce battle, which lasted for four days. Later called Battle of Mag Twyard. The second Battle of Mag Twyard was even more epic and bloody than the first one. The Tuatha de Dan An used their magic and their treasures to fight the Fomorians. Luff then led the Tuatha de Dan An to a decisive victory, in which most of the Fomorians were slain or driven back to the sea. The Tuatha de Dan An celebrated their triumph, and crowned Luff as their new king. They also divided the land among themselves, and assigned different roles and functions to their members. They enjoyed a golden age of peace and prosperity, in which they cultivated the arts, the sciences, and magic. But their reign was not to last forever. A new group of invaders arrived in Ireland, the Milesians, who claimed to be the descendants of Mil, the son of Bile, the son of Briagan, the son of Brath, the son of Magog, the son of Japheth, the son of Noah. The Milesians were skilled warriors and sailors, who had traveled across the world, and had learned many languages and customs. They had heard of the beauty and richness of Ireland, and they decided to conquer it. The Tuatha de Danann tried to stop them, using their magic to create storms and illusions, but the Milesians were not easily fooled or deterred. They landed at the mouth of the river Boyne, and met the three queens of the Tuatha de Danann, Eriu, Banba, and Fadla. 
The queens asked the Milesians to name the island after them, and the Milesians agreed, but they also demanded a battle for the sovereignty of the land. The Tuatha de Danann accepted, and the two sides agreed to a truce of nine days, during which the Milesians would return to their ships, and the Tuatha de Danann would retreat to the hills. The Milesians kept their word, and sailed back to the sea, but Tuatha de Danann broke their promise, and attacked them by surprise. The Milesians fought back, and managed to reach the shore again. They then marched across the country, and met Tuatha de Danann at the plain of Teotiu, the foster mother of Luff. There they fought a final battle, in which the Tuatha de Danann were defeated. The Milesians claimed the island as their own, and named it Eira, after the queen of the Tuatha de Danann. But the Tuatha de Danann did not disappear completely. They made a deal with the Milesians, in which they agreed to divide the island into two parts, the upper part, which belonged to the Milesians, and the lower part, which belonged to the Tuatha de Danann. The Tuatha de Danann then used their magic to create a veil of invisibility, and retreated to the Sidhi, or the Fairy Mounds, where they still live to this day. They became known as the Aes Sidhi, or the People of the Mounds, and they occasionally interact with the human world, sometimes as friends, sometimes as foes, sometimes as lovers. So, this is the story of the Tuatha de Danann, according to the Leber Gabala Iren. But is this story true? How much of it is based on historical facts, and how much of it is based on myth and legend? This is a question that has puzzled and fascinated scholars and enthusiasts for centuries, and there is no definitive answer. Stay tuned, and don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.